Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. In today's video over on the test server, link in the description if you want to get onto it to check out Eluard. Now, I'm pumped because I really wanted them to put a mage in the game. I thought he was going to be a healer. He is actually a mage. Now, looks like more, I feel like his support is going to be the big thing that he brings to the table. I think he looks really strong on paper. It's just going to depend on how he scales into the end game, but uh, let's get into it. Okay, Eloi, like I said, he is a mage, which is really, really nice. What's his primary role as AoE? I feel like his primary role is support. Have to see how it plays out, do some more testing for damage and stuff like that. But anyway, his ultimate. Eloi immediately creates a divine shield that has a value equal to 180% of his max health. If Eloi already possesses a divine shield, we'll get into his next ability in a sec. He consumes it in order to deal damage equal to two uh, to 20% of the consumed shield's value. So I don't know whether that means like if it's lost percentages, then it's only consuming a lower amount. So it's only 20% of the lower amount. Have to wait and see how it actually pans out or whether it's like because it was consumed while it was on him and then you're consuming the rest, whether it's just going to do 20% of the full shield. So when we got max skill, if it's like 20% of 260% of his max health every time, like that's pretty nice, but I'm not sure if that's how it's going to work. So I'll have to wait and see how that works. Like if he takes damage, whether the damage he deals is going to be reduced. It depends on how they word that. So anyway, I get carried away. Um, damage dealt cannot exceed 500% of Eloard's own attack rating, so it's got a cap on it anyway. Like I said, he, um, he creates a shield that's gonna just eat up other shields and blow up for damage. Pretty much the way it is, but I mean, it's a pretty big shield. Um, like... 260%, like that's massive. So I'm thinking early game, he might even function as a carry, put him in the front row and he can just get the shield. But his other abilities sort of, I don't know. We'll have to test it. Anyway, let's keep going. Passive. Uh, Eloard creates a divine shield at the beginning of the battle. Now that's a divine shield. This one says it has to be a divine shield. So if he replaces that, he's going to destroy that um, and put another shield on himself and deal that AOE damage. Um, it has a value of 150% of his max health. When the Divine Shield is broken, Eloard becomes stunned for 8 seconds. Now, once again, I'll have to try and test this more to see if it's... When it says broken versus consumed. So, I don't know whether consuming it with his ultimate is going to stun him. We'll test that in a minute. I tried a couple tests, but I couldn't quite see it. So, um, after which he creates a new Divine Shield with a value equal to 150% of his own max health. Damage dealt to Eloard while not protected by his Divine Shield is equal to yada yada yada. So, he's very... He is very susceptible to being stripped. Um, being cleansed of his buffs, like something like a Forks even, um, cleanse him and then he's just basically getting one shot by anything because he becomes super squishy. Uh, and then his stun duration goes down to five seconds. But really interesting to do to a lot more testing and see how this interacts. Then we've got this ability. Eloard recites a divine scripture which grants the ally farthest forward on the battlefield immunity from all damage. This ability can, can be interrupted. Damage immunity effect lasts for three seconds even after um, reaction ends or is interrupted. So he channels it. I'm not sure how long the channel is. I try and see it. Like you can see it here. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, six seconds, maybe. Like if that's like six seconds plus another three seconds after it, like if he doesn't get interrupted, it's not bad. But at minimum, you get three seconds even if he gets interrupted. Uh, most debuffs affecting the target ally are removed when he begins um, the re the re recite recitation. I suck at that word. But so basically, he channels it. You see a little link go from him to the ally. They get immune to damage. Really, really nice. That's where I'm thinking he has a lot of synergies with lunges, so we'll have to see how this pans out. I'll give you some ideas in a minute. Eloard recites a scripture of judgment, after which he deals 220% damage to all enemies. Enemies that have slain an ally will be dealt 50% more damage for each ally hero they slay. This ability can be interrupted. Deals 260% damage after the recitation ends. Enemies that slay an allied hero will be dealt 80% more damage. So this can be become big. So when I read this ability, the first thing that comes to mind is Lucretia. 
can this guy work with Lucretia? Because the inherent idea of Lucretia is to have enemies die. If you put Lucretia in the front row, three squishy allies that are melee that are going to run up and die up the top with Lucretia down the bottom front and him bottom back, he can sit behind her and he's got a chunky shield anyway. So you're only going to lose three allies, but it means whoever kills them is going to get one shot by this guy's damage, but you've also got him channeling to protect the Lucretia, and this gets better when we look at his signature item, or his furniture, whichever one it is. So, like, think about that. I think about this, where he, um, he's got the scripture. Let, let's get into his other abilities. Sorry, I, I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm excited for what the options are for this guy. After the first two seconds of battle, the farthest forward ally, excluding Eloard, on the battlefield receives a shield with a, max, with a value equal to 50%, of their own max health, which exists, exists for five seconds, and that goes up to 100% of their health, and it increases their attack rating by 40%. Like, it says attack rating is increased by 40% while the shield exists. So it's a big shield. It's like a decent sized shield, and if he can cast that, and but he does do a few basic attacks before he does his channeling one that makes him immune to damage, but if he can get the damage immunity when that shield's up and it doesn't break the shield, like that's a synergy. Um, but like, I'm just thinking like Lucretia, Zafrael, like I'm thinking in the Skrig and Vade team, things like Titus, um, Antandra, like all these things that he can protect really well that have struggled a little bit, like not Lucretia and Zafrael, obviously, but I feel like he's going to have great synergies with some of these things. I mean, like the giving you Zafrael a massive shield plus this, plus then on top of that, being able to make Zafrael immune to damage and let him just stay in the enemy line and just rain damage on them. You just like do Zafrael with chicken and him and it's like everything's gone and then you just put like a Scrag in there as well. Like the ideas are weak. I, 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 Kiasma, <laughs> Kiasma, we're coming for this one. Anyway, the furniture. Uh, three, damage um, immunity effects of the ability Prayer of Protection now include Eloard. So when he's channeling this one, protecting the ally, he's also protecting himself from damage. That gives him more synergies with that Lucretia. Uh, once again, because he's going to be sitting up the back there, guaranteed to protect her unless he gets CC'd. Really, really nice. Uh, moving on from that, we have after the ability uh, Sanctimony, which is his ultimate, is used for the first time, the damage immunity effects of the next prayer of protection will include all allies. So, this gets me thinking, Iron's Counter. Now, don't quote me on this, the timing is going to be the big thing, but because he is a mage, he has access to the, um, the sorcery artifact, which gives him the energy boost at the start. If you can play him as a competition against Irons, and like like I said, timing is going to be everything. I'm not sure if this will actually work, but if you can get it so that he can ult before the enemy Irons, and then move into channel this, and if that's like a six second channel plus a three second at the end of it, damage immunity for all allies, like he could potentially just ignore Einz's ult and then let your allies go ahead and kill him. Um, I feel like the synergy is like, he might even just be able to throw something like a Cecilia in there and kill an Einz with that because she'd be the furthest forward. She'd get that extra shield, which would give the extra attack, which could, I don't know. It's just ideas, just ideas. You guys can go test it. But I feel like this nine furniture giving your whole team damage immunity for like, I don't know, we'll say five to nine seconds. Pretty nice. Anyway, let's go in and test him, have a look at his abilities. I'm sorry that took a long time to go through, but like, there's just so many ideas running through my head right now that I wanted to talk about. So he got his shield at the start. Um, and so this is the channeling one where he makes his ally immune to the damage. And that's the one where he channels and deals damage to enemies. Um, and if they've slain someone, they take more damage. And that's pretty much all he has. Now we'll just wait for his ult. So his ult goes here. You see, he loses that shield, but he doesn't get stunned. So I think as long as his shield doesn't get broken, his passive one at the start, as long as it doesn't get broken by damage, I think he's pretty well fine. Because watching me again, like... I'm really curious to see how this plays out. Anyway, we're going to leave it on one time speed for this because this test will allow him to have his signature item and furniture, meaning that after his ult, his first one of his other ability is going to be free to use. Um, I mean, the first one of his other ability is going to give damage immunity to all allies. So 
what I want to test out here. Let's let's put you in there because you'll get the shield and the attack buff. It'd be cool. Put you in there because you lunge a bit. Put the Scrag in there. Let's put the Antandra in there. Let's just have fun and put just a bunch of cool things in there. Not you, Antandra. Oh, you're already in. We put like the... Who do I want to put for the last spot? Let's we put her back there and then we do like Lucius. Nah, too many shields. We don't need that many shields. Let's put Drez in because he's cool. Okay. So, let's go in slow speed. So, watch the Cecilia. She gets that shield from him straight away. But she's also got an attack buff from it, which is nice. So, I'm just watching him up the top here. So, now he's channeling. He's channeling on Antandra by the looks of it. It looks like Antandra went a bit forward, so he gave her the damage immunity. And now he's doing the ult, the, the, not the ult, the passive that deals damage to enemies, which doesn't look like a hell of a lot of damage, that one. I'm curious to see his ult here. So he does his ult. A decent little bit of damage on the Nomura, but doesn't stun him. That's the key thing. It doesn't stun him. So it's only if he's taking damage and losing that shield that way that it goes bad. So this is really interesting to me. We didn't get to see him channel after he used his first ult. So like I said, I don't think his primary role is going to be damage. I think it's going to be just overpowered support. I'm really excited. Let me know what you guys think. But like I'm thinking, like like I said, that idea of Ein's counter after his first ult, if you can rush him to an ult and that, like depending on the timing, like if you rush him to an ult before he channels his first channeling thing and then he like ults instant channels and it times with countering an Ein's ult, like that would be wicked. But I feel like that's good against anything anyway. And then you've got like, like I said, the shield at the start of the battle giving an ally 40% attack, Lucretia, Zafrael, uh, Antandra, Titus, Cecilia, Thalia, anything that lunges. But the other thing with that is you can make any ally get that. So you can put Laika in the front row and then any ally in the other front row, they instantly get that shield and they will be the one that he channels on. Like there's so many just, there's so many ideas that you can play with this guy that makes him incredibly cool. The other thing is you could have Olna in a team in the front row protecting another ally with like a lunger, like Cecilia, whoever you want, also getting damage immunity. So you just got like three units like just annoying the enemy team getting damage immunity. I'm thinking something like the Ninja Turtle jumping there, getting the shield, then getting damage immunity. I don't know. There's a million things going through my head. Anyway, let me know what you think is the best combo. We can try some things. Hopefully, I'll look at Yuki Asma <laughs> when he comes out. Anyway, guys, that is going to be it for this one. Thanks for watching. I hope you have an awesome day, and I'll look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.